Hello and welcome to the Auto Inform How To Workshop video. My name is Anton Zarev and today we'll be quickly looking at how to test a direct ignition system, also known as a coil and plug. What we've got in this car, which is the Alpha 166 uh, V6 Twin Spark, is a very commonly fitted the coil and plug ignition system. What we've got here is just the, the primary and the secondary windings and we've got the actual insulator which leads down to the plug. Now we get a lot of problems with ignition mainly due to the coils breaking down but a lot of problems can also be caused by dirt ingress, the environment they work in such as heat, what it does it damages the insulator which obviously starts over time acting as a conductor. What you'll tend to find is once you get a slight misfire the condition will only worsen. If you've got a misfire you get poor fuel economy, hesitation, poor performance and the more severe problems of course is unburned fuel going into your catalyst which is po can possibly get damaged leading to MOT failures and poor emissions. So how do we test one of these coils? Dead easy. All I've got is my oscilloscope, I only need one channel for this. We've got our own probes that we designed which enables us just to quickly plug into the back of the connector without intruding into the wires, causing insulator damage. We just pop it in there and then we can get a clean signal. So as you can see what we've got here is the three direct coil and plugs. Now the main, the main reason for doing this really is because we can't access the secondary part of the coil. Obviously it's bolted down, we can't access any of it and we can't really see the condition of it inside. But it, this is very useful to do before we actually remove the plug to assess what's going on beneath. This is non-intrusive testing, dead simple and dead quick which gives us a general idea of the health, health of the car at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm not sure which wire is which yet. We've obviously got a power, a ground and a trigger on one of the wires. Not sure which one's which yet, doesn't really matter, we'll soon find out. So let's have a look at what the settings I'm going to use on the actual software. I've got channel 1, 100 volt range. Um, time base I've got 100 milliseconds, this is just to get me an idea of what I'm actually looking at on the coil, whether I've got a power or the actual trigger line. So if I run this with no trigger, and I'll just start the car and then we'll see what signal we've got. So as you can see we've got a bit of noise but it's expected and I'm on around 14 volts so that tells me this is a power supply circuit. So what I'll do, I'll just go on to the next pin and see what I got there. On the second pin I've got zero volts which is the ground circuit. So I've got my final wire left. Now you can see I've got mix array signals which tells me it's a trigger line so how do we clean it up how do we get just one event repeating itself what I'm first going to do is put a repeat trigger on I've got three different triggers I can use I've got auto which automatically puts the trigger on but you don't always get the right image you don't always get the trigger usually you'd be looking about 50% of the ignition the 100 volt range. Uh, on the auto trigger it could sort of trigger on noise so you don't really want to use that uh, and you've got a single event which will just take a snapshot of the single trigger that it all counter so that's not good to us because we want to keep looking at it really. Uh, put it on repeat I want to put it to about 50 volts and now I've got a stable image of various events taking place so all I need to do now is just reduce the time base, one millisecond, and I've got my event on that particular coil. So what we've we got here, we've got our dwell, we've got a primary, we've got a burn time, and then we've just got a coil ringing at the end. Dead easy. So 
up and just pause it. What you want to do is a bit of noise here, which is expected just by purely looking at the engine. It's, it's not that clean. I suspect there's a bit of dirt ingress on the actual insulator, which will cause a bit of noise. Um, the coil ringing is fine. Another thing to know is really the burn time on this car, for some reason it's 3 milliseconds, usually I expect to see around 1.8 to 2.2, around 2 milliseconds really. Um, without going into more diagnostics, I don't know why it's so in that, it might be just a system or there could be a problem, um, but at the moment it's not really my concern. If we just turn the engine off, I'll be able to show you a severe case of a failure of the insulator and the problems that it causes. As you can see here, I've got a very prominent black mark, which was caused by an actual shunt of the spark energy coming from the top of the plug, downside of the insulator and into the actual body, which is obviously the earth. Um, this insulator was actually paired with the plug. Um, the actual plug is relatively new but because it was fitted to a faulty insulator, it actually caused the, the problem. And on this car, the actual catalyst was, was damaged by this severe misfire. So, dead easy to check. Um, it's also worth noting before sort of jumping to conclusions and changing the coil, we a lot of times try and wash the coil out. We, uh, clean all inside the rocker cover where the insulator goes, clean the actual insulator with some TFR, um, wash it down with some lukewarm water. Bear in mind, these coils, although they look rather sealed, they're not actually watertight in most cases. And we have seen where we've washed them and the actual the coil is deteriorated even worse, but if you take great care washing them, we have had a lot of success washing the coil, drying it out fully, and the signal went a lot better. So it's worth trying that before condemning the actual coil being faulty. And that's how we test a direct ignition coil. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.